Stephen Lamarca is AMT's manufacturing technology analyst. Nah. He has a background in physics and a passion for all things mechanical, namely automobiles, clocks, and uh, mac and cheese? Mac and cheese! And give me that back. Join him on a road trip across the country as he seeks out the world's top innovators in manufacturing. Let's check in to see where Steve is now. Touch that by accident. Can I grab one of these wipes? Mark, can I grab one of these towels? I did a bad thing. You're not supposed to touch anything. Shame on me. From the rocks and rivers All across the city skyline The world's much bigger Then you may have realized It's good It's a beautiful day We're getting back on the road All the places you'll go Road tripping with Steve I'm really excited. I've never seen a race shop before. I've had a few opportunities. Um, sadly, I couldn't take them. But uh, finally, it's, this is even better. It works to my advantage because I get to have a one-on-one -on -one with uh, Mark Bringle uh, to show me around the shop. Um, because of COVID, a lot of stuff is closed down and they don't have it fully operational. Um, but the both pro and con to that is they left some secretive stuff out and uh, it, uh, exposed that we may get to take a look at and hopefully we'll get something goody on camera uh, we don't want them to know that of course we're gonna try to hide everything but uh, hopefully we get to see some secrets I'm just playing there's this thing called cyber physical security it's a huge problem in uh, the manufacturing industry we want to adhere to it so come with me, let's check it out! <laughs> All right, I just arrived here at Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing their advanced manufacturing facility. Um, apparently, they make almost these race cars almost entirely in-house in this under one roof. So I'm really looking forward to seeing their facility and seeing some awesome metal. And uh, here's Mark to show me around. Mark, how's it going? Here, let me give you that elbow. There we go, keep it safe. Mark, so how's it going? It's doing great, yep. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, Thanks for coming so, in. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's uh, take me around. Let me, show, let me see some cars. Yeah let's, yeah, let's go downstairs and check it out. Sounds good. Camera's off on the way there. We can't film in this room, but this is our Thick. <laughs> oh, there's this. I recognize that. Are we allowed to show that? No. Pro probably not. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that yeah. You're... yeah. Don't put don't put this on film, but this okay. this this goes into like our uh, off camera. So we we cut. So you can't cut that with a laser. And then I'd imagine there's a safety concern once you put it in. Please? Uh, no. No. Okay. Uh, how about no? no. <laughs> Who's that, Dr. Evil? Yeah. <laughs> how about no? no? Yep. All right. It looks like we got some Stratasys uh, 3D printers here. Tell me what you got going on. Yeah, so uh, there's about three different reasons that we have 3D printing here. Mm -hmm. Uh, one is if we want a prototype piece before it goes into production, sure. uh, we're able to build up these. Second of all, uh, if we want to build fixtures or uh, prototypes, things like that, mm -hmm. we're able to do that. And then thirdly, there's about 30 plus parts that go directly from the machine to the car. Oh wow. So uh, out, of, out of the out, additive out, machine into out, the car. Directly from there to the car. Oh wow. Which saves us a lot of time and effort. Uh, in the traditional manufacturing methods. Awesome, all right. Let's see what's next. All right. Now, well, one thing that we've invested heavily in is the uh, five axes. So uh, we got three of those now. Uh, that's really 
helped us out with our setups and uh, sped up our whole procedure time as far as uh, the real complicated parts and pieces. Sure. So we have three of these now. There's four horizontals. There's about 14 verticals, about seven lays. Um, we got a press brake now, two EDM wire, EDM sinker, and a water jet. So all in all, about, about 40, 41 CNC machines now. Wow. What is this uh, machine making right here? Is this like a suspension bracket? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> wow. It, it, it's a bracket to hold on to flux capacitor. <laughs> but there's over 2,000 different parts and pieces that makes up our library of parts and pieces that we make for the actual mechanics Yeah. Uh, when they're assembling the cars. So, like I said, about 2,000 different parts and pieces that we do. 2,000 different parts and pieces. And you guys have to make them for how many cars? 14 different cars in the series? Well, we do uh, four cup teams, and then we do uh, three Xfinity teams. We do two ARCA teams, and then there's uh, wow. three or four uh, motocross teams. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, so, so not so just got, NASCAR. Yep, yeah, we got into Supercross uh, motocross. Wow. Yeah. Cool. But, uh, oh, wow. We, we can talk about this real quick. Um, it, this is wire EDM. You know, it's funny. I actually have never seen an EDM uh, machine, a wire EDM machine in person. Oh, really? Yeah. This is like my first time getting um, all up close and personal. Um, another perfect example is you can see how that blade's twisted. Yeah. So the head and the table can move in a fourth and fifth axes. Mm -hmm. So we got the square corner, but you created a uh, oh, wow. an angle tight. So we use this on our barometers on the front of the car when we're testing. Uh, oh, wow. to, to capture wind. This is for like aerodynamics piece. Correct. And this is just a testing piece. This Correct. isn't actually on the car when it's racing. Correct. Yeah. Awesome. But anything you need an internal square or you need um, you know, some type of angle like right. that or a spline, this, this is your part right here. That's wild. So you guys make the tools for the cars, not just parts for the cars themselves. Correct. Wow. We'll take you into the metrology room right now. Awesome. Um, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for the chase of the almighty Micron. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. So what we did in this room is we came in here and we dug up a three-foot slab so that uh, all the equipment's on a separate piece of real estate than the rest of the building. So that way you don't no get any vibration noise. vibration from any of the No machines. noise vibration that comes in from the machines. Uh, we keep the, uh, this is our humidity air conditioning system. So mm -hmm. uh, that keeps our constant 69 degrees temperature, less than 50% humidity. Wow. And so everything in here is designed with the MAR equipment for roundness, cylindricity, form, surface finish, those types of mm -hmm. things. And then we have two Zeiss CMMs uh, that really support the CNC efforts uh, for coordinate measuring. So yeah. uh, all of our parts and pieces that the guys are working on, they can bring it in here, obviously get it checked off before they go into production. Wow. And I'd imagine the, uh, the surface finish and tolerances need to be perfect when running an overhead valve engine at 10,000 RPM sustained for 500 yeah. laps. Yeah, you got an RA of two or less. So everything is diamond polished. And uh, yeah, we, our target is uh, two on the RA there, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So tell me about the wraps. You guys don't do paint jobs anymore. Yeah, we, um, whenever you're turning this amount of uh, cars around each week, uh, we do about 39 events per year. So that's a lot of cars that we're moving through the process. So each one of these teams will have about 15 cars in their fleet. And we're racing, we only have about two weekends all per year. So it's just a rolling wind tunnel of, you know, redoing these cars as they come back, refurbishing yeah. them and, and uh, with newer technology being uh, put out the back end of the fab room. So one way, one way that we've really saved time is you know, it used to take about two days to paint a car mm -hmm. and then put decals on it. And so now what we do is we started our own printing uh, shop here about four or five years ago. And we're able to uh, print a vinyl wrap mm -hmm. and we can do an install in about three hours. So it's a whole lot quicker. Uh, it's about five pounds lighter than a paint oh, job. Wow. So it's a competitive advantage. And then all the decals are implemented in on the, on the wrap. So it's a better aero surface uh, oh, sure. as the air is going over. You don't have an extra set of, of uh, decals on top of, the, on top of the, the wrap there. Mark, thank you so much. It was a real hey, pleasure being welcome. in here. Very welcome. Thanks again.
All right, so that was a real treat. I guess that's kind of becoming my tagline after these, huh? But uh, it's really wild. I had no idea that this was a full production facility. They make essentially the entire car in-house. I believe they said about 90%. Obviously, the tires are uh, supplied by the sponsor, which I believe is Goodyear right now. Um, the wheels are not made in-house. Those are made by a supplier for all of the NASCAR teams. Um, what was really cool was, as Mark was taking us around, it really is a, a, a family thing they got going on here. Everybody is really, it's, it's like they're used to seeing each other every day. Well, that's kind of what a job is, but um, sadly, there was a lot redacted and a lot that was shot off the record and, you know, couldn't be on camera. But um, fortunately, one of the things that I did catch that was probably my favorite part was somebody, I think, I think somebody at AM, back at AMT tipped me off that, make sure when you're there, you ask about their wind tunnel. And I didn't know what that meant at the time, but uh, I asked Mark, of course, when the cameras weren't on, I asked Mark about their wind tunnel and he was like, oh yeah, we have one. And, and uh, he says, Oh, well, can I, can I, I, I ask him, can I see the wind tunnel? And he's like, well, it's, we don't physically have one, but it's all done through the digital twin. And I'm like, how did we miss that during the entire shoot? But they implement Siemens software technology and have digitized virtually everything about the racetracks, everything about their race cars, including the internal components of the engine and the wind tunnel because they don't have a physical wind tunnel, they, sim they simulate it digitally through the digital twin and essentially get all of the benefits of having a physical wind tunnel without having to pay the upkeep of having a physical wind tunnel. But this was, I was not expecting everything that we saw and sadly what you guys couldn't see, but you'll just have to trust me. It was awesome. Thanks for watching.